Hello, everybody, and welcome back to In the Trenches. This is Ian Beckles. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed your weekend. Uh, for us Buccaneer fans, was another tough one. Um, we're getting used to it, unfortunately. Uh, three and one is far from where we are right now. You know, what's crazy about this Buccaneer team, and now we're going to two years in a row where the Buccaneers can't pee a drop, yet they're still in the playoff run. I I don't know how it's possible for me to be sitting up here at four and seven and the Buccaneers are still in the playoff run, but it is a possibility, which which is crazy. It, that, that never happens. Last year you got it at eight and nine. This year you're four and seven and you're still alive. Now, I'm going to say I'm still alive with a grain of salt. This team's not good. It's not a good football team. It's not a well-constructed football team. It's not a football team constructed to be good in the near future. Um, we're not very talented. I don't know what other way to say it. You know, we can keep on saying it is Baker, it isn't Baker. I, I think he's part of the problem. He's not. He's not terrible, but he's not good. We have a big drop here, a big drop there, but we, we don't score many points. Defensively, we're worse than we are offensively, whether you know it or not, okay? We are not good defensively, everybody. We don't have a lot of good football players. We just don't. Where are they? Where are the good football players? Where are they? Offensively, I don't really still understand what we're trying to get accomplished. We ran the ball a little bit better. We had a couple key drops. Baker had a couple boneheaded plays. Play calling is still questionable. Now, you, you, you lose 27-20 to a Colts team that's probably, you know, your equal, okay? Probably. So it's not a big deal that the Buccaneers lost on the road. But we keep on losing the same way. We're just... We're not good enough to go on the road to beat anybody. We're not good enough to beat a good team. We're not really good enough to upset anybody. What's the Buccaneers' big win this year? What's their big win? It's not It's not pretty. And we keep on going and we keep on looking forward. Well, if we win five out of the next... We can't even win a football game. We can't even win a football game. But here's how it shakes out, everybody. Bucks are four and seven. Normally, you'd be like, season's over. And then let's, start talk, let's start talking about draft picks. There's only six games left. Let's talk about draft picks. There's no way you're going to mess around and win the, get in the playoffs. The Falcons and the Saints went at it yesterday, and the Falcons won. They both come out of it at five and six, both of them. The Bucks are four and seven. They're not out of it. Now, the Bucks can't win shit. But neither can the Falcons and the Saints. That's what happened last. That's how the Bucs got in the playoffs last year. At the end, they didn't fight their way in the playoffs. They snuck in the back door. And they're trying to sneak in the back door again this year. But I don't see any type of run happening to where this team's going to win two or three games in a row. I don't see it. All right? Next week, though, listen to this. The Saints play the Lions. And the Falcons play the Jets. It's not crazy where they lose those games. I Saints Lions, I'm picking Lions. Falcons Jets, it's a toss up, but I'll probably pick the Jets. At the Jets, I pick the Jets. So we we may be messing around next week, okay? The Buccaneers are playing the Carolina Panthers, who can't beat anybody. I still don't know if the Bucs are gonna beat them. I mean, we don't. But if the Buccaneers mess around and beat a team that they should beat next week, they may mess around and be tied for first place in the craziest division ever. Crazy meaning god-awful. Just a terrible division. Bad football everywhere. If you're a Buck fan, this is not this is not good football. It's not good football, okay? And I don't know what what where to start. I don't know where to start with the bad football. Let's just look at the, the box scores, okay? This game was 27 to 20, which is not the worst thing in the world. But if you look at the Buccaneers games, they all end up the Bucs losing by about seven points and them doing something at the end to come back. But at no point did you really believe the Bucs were going to win that game. Did, did, did you? I just, they're not showing me anything offensively or defensively, to be honest with you, to make me think that they're going to do anything towards the end of the game to win. Let's look at the statistics, all right? 
The Colts had 394 yards offense. Did, didn't you guys just tell me our Bucks defense was good? Didn't you, you just tell me that? I've been telling you for weeks the Bucks defense is not good. Even when the Bucks were 3-1, and one, oh, we, at least we have a good defense. Go back to the in the trenches. I was like, no, 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 no way. I don't see it. I don't see the turnovers. Still don't. I don't see the sacks. Still don't. We had a couple sacks yesterday, but literally we only hit the quarterback three times all game. He was very, very comfortable, all right? So we give them 394 yards offense. In the time where the Buccaneers could play defense back in the day, you were never getting 394 yards. You're lucky if you get 300. You're very, very lucky. And it's not like it was two big, monstrous 80-yard plays. The Colts had 26 first downs. That's a lot of first downs, people. 20 first downs, a lot of first downs, okay? 26 first downs just means that they're pretty much putting it in your, in, down your throat, all right? Fourth down efficiency. The Colts were three for four. You got to get off the football field, all right? The Bucks offensively didn't have a terrible game. We have 125 yards rushing. You got to feel good about that. Six sacks we gave up. Six sacks. I mean, some of those were on Baker. Some of them were on the offensive line who I'm going to start talking about some people now. And I've never talked negatively about some of these people before like Tristan Wirth. Never. Tristan Wirth hasn't been playing that great. And that's to his standards. He's, Tristan Wirth set the standards. But at the end of the game, when the game was still on the line, I'm not expecting Tristan Wirth to get beat by Ebu Khan or whatever the hell that guy's name is. He's not even a real big-time rusher. T.J. Watt or something like that, okay, but if we have to start worrying about Tristan Wirth at the left tackle, we're in big, 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 big trouble because that's something we never had to worry about before. But believe it or not, this Buccaneer team is still <laughs> there in the playoff hunt. It sounds stupid. I know it does because the Buccaneers can't beat anybody. It sounds stupid. But my thing is, are they improving? The Glazers... I mean, the Glazers have to be looking at this like, what's going to happen going forward? They're probably looking, saying, we're probably not going to make the playoffs this year. They know what it looks like, and this ain't what it looks like, okay? Are the Bucks improving? Are the Bucks making progress? And what are we getting accomplished this year? You can answer the questions if you want. We're not improving because we started off at 3-1, and one and now we, we lost every freaking game in the last two months, pretty much. Are we making progress? I don't know where. I don't. I really don't. And what are we getting accomplished this year? We're not going to win many games. Our quarterback's not being uh, locked in to me. And we're going to get into the Baker Mayfield thing, whether they should re-sign him or not, and all this crazy hoopla that I've been hearing. But at the end of this season, say the Buccaneers win three out of the next seven games, okay? They win, they get seven, seven and ten, and they are out of the playoffs, and then we go into the offseason. This Buccaneer team's going to look so much different next year, man. It's going to look so much darn different next year. Next year, it's going to have maybe two different linebackers in there. Next year, might have three different offensive linemen in there. Next year... I must hope for God's sakes, JTS is not in there. It's going to look different. The defensive backfield maybe look different too. There's some some of our names that we used to talk about that you couldn't didn't have to worry about. Didn't have to worry about you know Carlton Davis back in the day. He, not so much Jamel Dean during the day. I mean he was he was hurt yesterday, but those were guys used to pencil in. Okay, that, that's we're good. There's not too many penciling in happening these days on this team, period, okay? And forget about what you think this team is, okay, because there's Buccaneer fans out there that we try to be optimistic and make things that they are and aren't. This is what the Buccaneers are. What the Buccaneers are is 22nd ranked offensively out of 32 teams. That means you're better than 10 teams. That doesn't make the playoffs. It can make the playoffs if you have a fantastic defense. Unfortunately for Buck fans and Buccaneer organization, our defense at this moment is ranked 26th. 
That means there's six teams worse than you. 22nd offensively and 26th defensively is not an equation for any playoff team ever in the in the history of football. It just doesn't work that way. Okay? It, it ain't it ain't it ain't gonna happen. And what we're watching out there is just a consistently inconsistent football team every single week. There's certain things that just don't look right. Okay? If you remember right when back in the day when the Buccaneers were at their greatest, they either did two things really well. Todd Bowles' defense when it was at his best was 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 blitzing their asses off, which they're still doing, but they were getting to the quarterback. Go back to the Monty Kiffin years, the Buccaneers were able to rush the passer. We don't do that anymore. This Buccaneer team is blitz happy. I want to say one other team has more blitz than the Buccaneers. I'm not sure what team that was, but one other team, maybe the Vikings, I think, off the top of my head. But I believe the Buccaneers have the second fewest pressures. They don't go together, people. If you're blitzing the most and getting the least pressures, that's putting a whole lot of stress on our defensive backfield. And if right now you ask me if our defensive backfield is good, I would say hell to the no. Carlton Davis, what the hell happened? What the, what the, what the hell happened? He used to be that guy. Jamel Dean wasn't in, but when he was in last week and the week before, I could ask the same questions. What the hell happened? And, you know, the interception that Carlton Davis got yesterday was a misassignment by somebody on the offense. It was either the receiver ran the wrong route or it was just a ridiculous throw by Gardner Minshew. Carlton Davis got the interception. Other than that, we didn't do nothing defensively. We hit, we hit the quarterback three times. Three times. They had 400 yards offense. We hit the quarterback three times. Once was uh, uh, Kalija Kansi on a rush, and I kind of like this young kid, okay? I like some of the things he's doing. He's not quite there yet, but I, I like some of the things he's doing. The other one was JTS on a sack, which you guys know that wasn't him. He didn't create it. He came around on a stunt, and the running quarterback ran into him. He didn't create any of it. I'll give people credit where it's due. He didn't create any of it. And another time, Devin White hit the quarterback. That's it for the whole game. You think that's conducive to winning? Hitting the quarterback three times where they have 400 yards offense? It just doesn't look right. There's still too many busted coverages for the Buccaneers defensively. There's just not enough pressure, period. And... There's just some of our stars aren't stars. Some of our stars are just not playing like stars. Let me start by talking about Shaq Barrett. Shaq Barrett went through some stuff in the offseason we know. Um, Got to be tough to be dealing with, you know. Uh, starting in the year, he was still one of our better players. He's still coming off the Achilles. He just hasn't shown up here the last little while. I mean, all due respect, you know, just you're just not ain't showing up. I still see the effort, but, you know, we need some statistics. JTS, I'm done bickering about it. I mean, it just doesn't, it just doesn't do anything. Yeah, yeah, Diaby's out there doing some things more so. He, he should be getting some more uh, playing time. But as a whole, there's not enough pressure up there. When you talk about your best pressure is coming from your nose guard and your inside interior guy, it's not enough, all right? So this Buccaneer team, once again, you got to be able to hang your hat on something. And the Buccaneers just don't, they don't have it. Blitz happy, not getting to the quarterback. Can't run the football. Right? Ran the football a little bit yesterday, which was nice. Still lost the game, going away. Let's talk about Baker Mayfield. Baker Mayfield plays about, the, every week I come on here, I say the same thing. He plays about the same every week. It's not that far off. Yesterday, missed some throws, had some drops, made some bonehead throws that turned into some, you know, obviously detrimental plays. Got us out of a few plays, got us out of some situations. It's the way he plays. But we don't score a lot of points. That's the issue. We don't score a lot of points. When Baker Mayfield, there's times where I'm listening to the broadcast or even the people in my room, 
And then we talk about Baker Mayfield's playing pretty good. I'll look and I'll say they have seven points. It's the third quarter. Well, why is that good? Like, our expectations of Baker Mayfield are so darn low that when he just doesn't stink, we think he played well. I think that's the issue. Nobody will ever say Tom Brady or Patrick Mahomes or even Justin Herbert played well when you have seven points going into the third quarter or well into the third quarter. Baker Mayfield is what he is, and I don't think he's surprising. I think he's actually surprising people that he's playing this well. But this is really what Baker's been through his whole freaking career. That's it. But my problem is, looking at this offense, it's so unexplosive to me. It just, it's so vanilla, and it just doesn't scare anybody. It's not scary at all. You know, when you talk about offenses are out there clicking, I'll give you a different offense out there. You could tell me what scares you for sure. Who is scaring you? Mike Evans? I mean, Mike Evans is out there doing his thing still, but you can't say Mike Evans is scary. And you put Mike Evans on the, on the Miami Dolphins, where is he on the, the list of scary from top to bottom? Maybe fourth, fifth? So the fact that he's our scary guy, maybe he should tell you something. That it's not good. None of it's good. Godwin a lot of times is, is invisible. I believe he had his first drop yesterday. He has great hands, but one touchdown all year? One touchdown all year for Chris Godwin. One touchdown. I heard a lot of people yesterday bickering about you know, Baker Mayfield sneaking it and getting hurt. That's part of football, everybody. I think Trask came in, and God forbid he would have thrown that touchdown. <laughs> boy, if he that touchdown with a touchdown, boy, I tell you today, them Gator fans be going ballistic. Oh, it was a good throw. Actually, no, it wasn't a good throw. You got to keep it inbounds and be able to give your receiver a chance to stay inbounds. So that didn't work out. Baker Mayfield came back in the game. High ankle sprain, supposedly he was limping after the game, which is what happens in high ankle sprains. You get through the game, and when it starts to cool down, you're, you're going to catch yourself in trouble. But that game was a microcosm of what's happened for this Buccaneer team really all year long, if you really, really think about it. Bonehead penalties. Penalties from the one-yard line. I mean, that's not the first time this has happened this year. You got to get to a point where you got to start looking at the coaches. When you're on the one-yard line and you have illegal motion, for God's sakes, line up, make it vanilla, and just try to pound it at somebody. Why are you trying to be cute with this? Oh, we got to be in shotgun and we got to this, we got to have motion. Make it as simple as you can. They're, just, they're, just make, they're making things too difficult. Seriously. Baker played about the same but once again, the results could have been different. That Durham catch at the end of the at the end towards the end, I think it was in the third quarter. That Durham, our third, fourth string tight end, whichever one he is, the catch he made on the five yard line should have been a pick. Should have been picking gone the other way, actually. Unbelievable catch by this Durham kid. I don't know much about him, but Baker was being Baker yesterday, and I, I, I continuously listen to sports radio. And I listen to the the mentality. He's getting too much of the credit, okay, and too much of the blame as well. To me, like I, when, before Baker came in here, I wasn't a Baker Mayfield fan. I'm still not really. I mean, it, people get too enamored with them liking him. He's a tough guy. He's a tough, gritty guy. I don't want my quarterback to be gritty. I want my quarterback to make the throws, to make the right decisions, and to lead. We got a guy off the trash heap that didn't win, and he's still not winning. Everybody wants to give Baker Mayfield a high five because he lowered his shoulder and got a first down. That's not what I want. I want a quarterback making the right decisions, and I'm not sure Baker Mayfield's that guy. Getting hurt on the sneak, that's not a big deal to me. That's just something that just happens, okay? 
And I'm not going to give him credit for getting back in the game. Get your ass back in the game. If you can play, you play. That's what happens in the NFL. I'm a, a Baker Mayfield fan? Not necessarily. Am I a Baker Mayfield hater? Nope. Neither one of those two. I'm just telling you what I see. And what I see is a guy out there playing well enough to win and also well enough to lose. So if everything around him is cool, like I said before that game, Gardner Minshew and Baker Mayfield are the same players. They play better around Gardner Minshew. They play better around Minshew. They play better around him. If you swap teams, Baker would have won with the Colts because we didn't do anything to really to, to help to help Baker out. Palmer, you know, drops that slant. That takes us. I think it goes to the house. What is happening when the Buccaneers are dropping just the easiest of catches? Mike Evans being the number one culprit. I'm not talking about Godwin because you know he had a drop yesterday, but he don't drop very often. But every single game, we're gonna have two monstrous drops by the Buccaneers. Every single game, there's two monstrous drops. Offensively, Cody Malk plays like a, a rookie. He does. He, strug he struggles a little bit every game. The offensive line in general played like horse crap. If you give him six sacks, I got to say he played like horse crap. And Tristan Wurst, for the first time in his career, I'm going to say I can say he played poorly. I mean, it's, it's a long way into his career now. It's a long way into his career for me to be talking for the first time. I think he played poorly. I think I played poorly in my second game in my career. All right? So it's going to happen. That's something that's going to happen. That's that's life. But you have to start worrying about Tristan Wurz and his decline, and he's just not playing the same. That high ankle sprain is something that's going to be there for maybe ever. It's just not, it doesn't go away. High ankle sprains do not go away ever. And he's on, when I see him on the field, I, I know what he's going through. It's tough. And there's a couple that, the, that the sack he gave up at the end of that game wasn't a great, it wasn't a great move. It just was an outside, he attacked his outside shoulder and normally Tristan Worse jams him and stops that and like it was a revolving door. You don't want that. Like I said before, if we have to worry about Tristan Wirth and Tristan Wirth and the way he's playing, we're going to be in big, big, big trouble. Now, my thing is this. As we go forward, the Buccaneers have to make some decisions, all right? Everybody wants to talk about Trask, put Trask in. and I just, having been in locker rooms before, you know, locker rooms talk. Locker rooms have feels to them, Okay. If you bench Baker Mayfield, what is the message that you're sending to your team? If I told you from top to bottom, who is our issue? Who is the reason why the Buccaneers aren't winning? If you go down, I'm going to say, before we get to Baker Mayfield, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say play calling, coaching in general, pass rush, catching the ball. We don't catch the ball very well. We don't rush the passer. Lately, we don't stop the run very well. Let me think. Uh, we don't get too many big plays. Like don't, A lot of that stuff's not Baker Mayfield, all right? You can put anybody in there, but those other things don't, don't improve. If you take Baker Mayfield out and put in Justin Herbert, okay, because he's not an established guy, I don't know if the Buccaneers win one extra game this year because there's certain things that Baker Mayfield does better than Justin Herbert. Not spinning the ball, but a lot of the rest of the stuff he does as well as Justin Herbert or better. It's not on Baker Mayfield, but it's also not Baker Mayfield's football team. Come on now. We have to see that. We have to see that this is not the answer. It's not the answer. Why would you want it to be the answer if you're a Buccaneer fan? You want Baker Mayfield as your quarterback going into next year? We're going to be sitting at the same spot next year. We're not better than we were last year at 8-9. and nine. We're not better. We're worse. That 8-9 and nine team beats this Buccaneer team, I believe, every single time. And some of our stars now are starting to regress. I'm not hearing Vita Vea, Vea's name as much, okay? Antoine Winfield Jr., we, we, need, we need more. Devin White, I'm done calling him a star. 
He just gets blocked a lot. That's it. Savassier Dennis, maybe we're going to see a little bit more of him. We're going to see more because Levante is out or down. But Devin White, to me, you're just talking. That's it. You ain't doing nothing. You ask for $20 million a year, you're lucky to get five next year, playboy. It's not, you, ain't, you ain't doing nothing that impresses me. I mean, nothing. I just see you get blocked and get washed and sometimes mopped. Okay, those are not characteristics of a $20 million guy. Go watch, you know, Warner, you know, guys like that. Every game, their name is being said. Running game, passing game, affecting everything. Devin White, I don't, I don't know what they do with him. I don't know what they do with him. Anymore. I know what they do with the offseason. They let him go. And he's going to he's gonna, he's gonna have a rude awakening when he's going to find out that nobody's going to give you no damn $20 million because you're not as good as, as advertised. You know, or you, at least you're not as good as you say that you are. So the, the sad part about this whole thing is there's still we could still take steps backwards. We've lost, lost what, six or seven? We could still get take steps backwards here. It's still a possibility. And before the end of this football season, I think the Buccaneers are going to have to try to get something accomplished, but I'm not even sure what they're trying to get accomplished anymore. We won three games in the beginning, and that gave us false hope. But if you shuffle these games around and you won two in the last four or whatever, the sentiment would be different. The long and short of it, you only won four damn games. You won four damn games, and we're just this deep in the season, and we still don't know what we are. And you, you always have to be trying to accomplish something as an organization. Look at the Lions. I could tell what the Lions were trying to get accomplished from the second a new coach got there. The second he got there, I knew what they are trying to get accomplished. I don't know what we're trying to get accomplished. And I don't know if Todd Bowles knows what he's trying to get accomplished. And I don't know what the sentiment of our front office is, whether they think he's dead man walking or even if they're trying to think about next year. I know they're trying to make money as they normally are, but because of Tom Brady coming in here, winning that Super Bowl, bringing these players in, have this dead cap money, we're going to have to bite it for the next couple of years, unfortunately. You just got to have to make the best out of, make the most out of what we have, okay? It's going to be tough. We're Buccaneer fans. We're here, and we ain't going nowhere. But it's tough to watch, yo. It's tough to watch because it just seems like it's a it's a broken record, and it's the same damn thing every single week. We could have, we should have, we moved. But if you're not, something has to change. And it just seems like we're doing the same thing over and over and over. You can't beat the Carolina Panthers. It's going to be a problem. It's going to be a big problem, or even a revolt in that stadium. All right. I think the, the bags are going to be out if they can't beat the Carolina Panthers, and we don't want that to come back. We remember those days, right? Way, way back in the day. If anybody wants to hit me up, you can hit me up on social media. It's Ian underscore Beckles. Make sure you listen to my other podcasts as well, Brooks and Beckles. Uh, also, um, a Mental Intimacy, and I'm going to be starting up my uh, plant power back here real, real quick. So I appreciate everybody listening in. Hopefully next week we're talking about our Buccaneers winning uh, against Carolina and being one game out of first place. It's a possibility. We might even be tied for first place. You never know. And I can't believe I'm still saying that. Have a wonderful week and please be safe. Peace out.